Hi Taurus, welcome to your end of April 2020 general tarot update. It's Raina here. So do you know what the significance of this day is, Taurus? This is the 19th of April and the sun is officially in your sign. I didn't see the exact time, so perhaps we are still in the 29th degree of Aries. Not, not entirely sure about that, but I know it's changing today. So happy solar return and happy, um, you know, whatever anniversary of the American, uh, the Revolutionary War. Because that was in 1775 when it began. And we, <laughs> we was allegedly separated from the British. Um, that's uh, still up for debate, but uh, in any case, at least on paper, we can say that. Okay, so let's see. So um, basically, the, the big news at the end of this month, uh, or one of them, I'm not going to go into all the uh, transits. I do have uh, a transits report for your sign for the month of April, so check that out if you are wondering what's going on for Taurus, Taurus Sun and Taurus Rising. Um, but there's going to be a new moon in your sign on the 22nd. So that's nice. And that's at 4 degrees. Or no, it's actually at 3 degrees of uh, Taurus, which is a number of abundance. I was hoping I'd get the <laughs> Empress card to kind of back me up on that, but Temperance works. And if I get another Major Arcana card, I'm going to be really happy. Uh, I'll be happy either way. Oh, you got some good money and mojo going here. I'm going to pick an additional card. Okay. Well, we have a card in the the place of the, you know, what's happening or, you know, whatever you want to call it, the heart of the matter, the Temperance card, which is connected to the sign of Sagittarius. But the Temperance card is a card of uh, moderation and as above, so below. So that kind of balance between the spiritual and the material. And um, the, the reason, well, I'm just going to pick the past position to kind of get into this. So in the past position we have the moon card which is connected to creativity, intuition, and in some of the more challenging sense of the word, addiction, escapism, illusion. It's connected to to it's connected to the sign of Pisces. Um, so <clears throat> if these are two signs that you have been dealing with, that could be one thing. But in terms of how it works energetically, um, it's about, it could be moderating your moods. The moon rules the, the emotions. And um, if not yours, somebody close to you, somebody that you care, are they having problems finding balance? Are they, you know, um, bipolar, the word itself, you know, the two extremes going from one extreme to the other, mood imbalances. Um, addiction is connected to the moon card. So temperance is connected to, you know, getting sober. So whether this is you or somebody else, but it's really calling in that spiritual part of yourself. Uh, Taurus is an earth sign and it's a fixed earth sign. When Tor Taurus is a sensual type, sensual type of individual and there's nothing wrong with that. The Puritans believe that there was, but there really isn't. It's all about balance in life. You know, how extreme people are about the things that they're doing. And of course, some people take things to extremes. They um, decide that they're going to, to do something and they don't stop. They don't know when to say no. So that could be about that. Also, um, 
perhaps you've been busy chasing the almighty dollar and not chasing your higher self. And maybe you realize that you're kind of imbalanced with your, if you, especially if you are artistic, Taurus, because I think a lot of you naturally are being ruled by Venus and that you just love to create beauty and be surrounded by beauty. And um, sometimes the world um, can interfere with that. And I really do feel that artists are on the spiritual path by virtue of being artists. Because a lot of times, uh, those of us who identify as artists have felt um, different than other people, have felt like life uh, is more of a struggle because we don't see the world the way other people see it, and it's hard for us to function that way. A Taurus person is going to be more grounded, more pragmatic, and more capable of navigating the world. So it's not so much that, but you still may feel like you're not expressing yourself in this way. Um, in terms of relationships, also with temperance, and you have to look at somebody's chart uh, to really get a good feel for this because the sun sign isn't going to cut it, but the moon, for instance, the moon sign, um, it, let's say your moon is in Scorpio and you feel things very profoundly. That's awesome, but it's not easy. It's not something that is easy to moderate and it can lead to excess, emotional excess that hurts you, but also hurts your relationships. So you have to be willing to um, change. And when somebody is a fixed sign, this is not this this does not come natural to them. That does not mean that it's not possible though, and that's something that has to be emphasized is that just because you know it's not something that you are inclined to do, it doesn't mean that it's not something you can do. And you have to make that attempt so that you can um, find, you know, a comfortable middle ground so that so that you're not just like having drama in relationships going in one relationship after the other and never finding that peace the higher message is the ace of pentacles now even though the higher message i'm looking at things philosophically and not necessarily predictively i do think in this particular case that it could be saying you know hold out for this new relationship that may be on, on its way, and with somebody possibly of the earth element. <clears throat> oh gosh, I tried to clear my throat. You know, this is the first reading I'm doing, but oh God. <clears throat> I can't stand when I'm like, <laughs> when I have a frog in my throat. Um, and I can't stand when I hear other people with frogs in their throat because I just want them to clear their throats. But now I know how difficult it can be sometimes. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, this is a portal um, when they show something like this. Aces are portals, really, because they're beginnings. Um, but it's some, it, in love, this card symbolizes something of a lasting nature that isn't like fly-by-night. The temperance card, to me, with the moon card, because moon can be very unstable. And it's like you're looking for that stability. And you have to hold out. You have to hold out for, I was going to say the word hold space. You know, that's one of those hippie words that, new agey kind of words that's used a lot. And I know I'm misusing it. That's not what that means. But that was what popped into my mind. And I'm starting when I'm doing readings now to just say what uh, pops into my mind. Um, if, I, if it really is about holding space, I would say it's holding space for yourself to attract the type of person that is represented by the Ace of Pentacles. The other Earth signs besides you are Virgo and Capricorn, uh, but I'm not saying that it has to be those signs. It's some, it, they naturally embody those um, qualities, but everybody is an individual and astrology can only go so far. People's influences extend, you know, they say nurture versus nature. So we use astrology as a tool, but it's not a crutch and it can't be a cure-all. 
It can't, you know, tell us everything about everyone and everything. Um, but in any case, hold out for that quality of relationship. Um, don't settle for less. It's like saying, you know, for people who, maybe a good analogy since I have Taurus Rising is about food. Um, why blow your money in a fast food restaurant when you can have a, a wonderful meal? Maybe you can only afford it once every two weeks or once a month, but it's worth 30 fast food meals. That one meal. If you, if you treat your life like a work of art, you will not settle for less anymore. <clears throat> what crosses you? Oh, <laughs> that feels a lot better. Let's see how long it lasts. King of Cups. Now, if this is an individual, again, maybe this is a Pisces man. This this person is this may he may have an addiction. He may be you may be trying to get your life together. And part of the reason is because of this person. that They've turned it upside down. Whether you're with him, whether you have left him, it doesn't matter. He still is maybe trying to get in if, if you're not with this person. And, you know, temperance to me suggests that he may be, um, he may have like um, a chemical imbalance or a mood disorder that he tries to self-medicate, for instance, if addiction is part of this. When, when you have a, when you're reading a cups card and it's in the reversed position, this can especially be talking about addictions, but also about people who are manipulative, who are um, emotionally stunted and they're using guilt, shame, whatever, whatever they can find in their toolbox to manipulate you. So um, you have to stand your ground. Um, and this takes time. This takes sometimes some hard knocks in life when you, you know, deal with these kinds of people. This could be like a covert narcissist, somebody who's always a victim and they're always having problems, but they don't see that they're their own worst enemy. Um, and being able to um, understand what is your responsibility and what is somebody else's and when they are shirking that responsibility in a big way and not to buy into it if they're trying to get you to feel like oh if it wasn't for you I wouldn't be doing this that's like a big one and uh, people fall for it because you know we all have uh, our own traumas and sometimes they involve uh, maybe having parents who have addictions and this is just kind of repeating that cycle and we don't know this the people that have had this don't realize this but they are trying to heal what they couldn't heal in childhood sometimes I'm not saying in all cases but in some sometimes and it's it's a lofty notion, but it's not going to work. People do what they want to do, and they quit when they want to quit. Um, but this person, even if they don't have an addiction to substances, they have an addiction to, um, or they have a tendency to blame others for their own problems. And, you know, it's up to you, Taurus, to reject that out of hand and say, I do not accept this. You're trying to put this on me, but I refuse to accept it. And you can, you can visualize it even. You can visualize somebody trying to, you know, take a, some luggage and dump it on you or, or take something and put it on you and that you have put it back on them like you are not accepting it and then it doesn't go into your energetic field was coming in represented by the three of pentacles sometimes this can be advice but this is about um, to me um, you know this can even be your own um, 
your own um, ability to attract money, your own work. This is about cooperation with work projects and things like that. And, um, you know, one of the things that I was also seeing here with the Ace of Pentacles is like this idea of a new job, a new job. And with the Temperance card and the Moon card and the King of Cups in reverse, in reverse, this idea of um, you not feeling like you know what is going on. Um, you know, a boss who is manipulating, who is kind of like not keeping it real, a hundred percent, and feeling like, uh, or maybe even working long hours in order to um, appease somebody who's manipulating you. And so with the Three of Pentacles in that scenario, this is a card of perhaps um, joining forces with co-workers. Maybe they are experiencing the same things too. Now, of course, with the current situation that we're facing, which this period of time is going to be still very relevant for most of us. Um, businesses some, sometimes are on skeleton crews. I've seen it myself, if they're open at all. But um, maybe, you're, maybe you're wondering, like, am I going to have this job when I come back? And you're being strung along. And you want, you know, with the Three of Pentacles, um, I think this is important now anyway, of uh, getting together with others, joining together with others for a monetary goal. Because um, there are strength in numbers. And this is a time when I think we're going to start to see a lot of the bad actors, the, the corporations that you know have really had uh, double lives and have funded nefarious things and all of those things that we don't know about on the surface that it's going to change you know the Taurus and uh, Uranus and Taurus the whole monetary system everything uh, Pluto and Capricorn you know systems in general we we're, we're experiencing a lot of teardowns and in the process um, when we really like connect with others and maybe it's bartering Three of Pentacles are co-workers, but I could see it being, you know, um, offering services for others in exchange for something else in the meantime, if there's some kind of thing going on in that, in that regard. Um, but also banding together with others and either demanding something or going off on your own and doing something for yourself. Um, in terms of... Um, you know, uh, relationships. This is the architect's card. So if you have met somebody recently and you think it's going to go somewhere, lay that foundation. The, you know, be old-fashioned. Do things very methodically. And, um, you know, don't be so eager to jump ahead. And, you know, Taurus has an open heart. Like, you know, uh, very romantic, wanting to be in a couple with somebody, but, you know, resist that urge to just, you know, add that person to your collection <laughs> in, in terms of your possessions. You know, be willing to just be friends and see what happens, see what develops. Now, I did pick this as a, an outcome card. I don't like to end uh, with certain cards, and this is one of them. This is a card of anxiety. And, you know, this is something that I think a lot of us are dealing with, let's face it. Um, but with a sign like Taurus, and gosh, you know, even just having Taurus rising, it's so influential uh, sometimes because stability is so um, important to a Taurus person. When something changes, and something changes radically, that can shake a Taurus person to their core. What happens when people get shaken to their core? What is one of the first things they start doing? Besides their stomach, turn, you know, twisting in knots. 
they start to control. And anxiety is ruminating over lack of control. Trying to control one's reality is a pretty fruitless task. Now, trying to, um, you know, show up for yourself is always in season. So, so especially, you know, thinking about the moon card in terms of art, you know, in terms of any projects, anything that you have as a dream that you really think even to make money from. Yeah, the Ace of Pentacles says, have faith that this can be a money-making venture. Don't write it off as a hobby or something frivolous. And I think that this is super important at this time because, you know, if the vibration is rising, that means that people are tuning in to higher frequencies and they are not going to be satisfied with the status quo, with what has been kind of like shoved upon them. That's the beauty of the internet, is that we have the ability to choose our own entertainment, if you will, or education, whatever it is. I mean, even if you're somebody who liked to watch PBS in America, some educational TV, you still were faced with what they wanted to educate you about. And now you can do it for yourself. So don't um, kind of overlook this wealth of um, possibilities that we have. But yes, honor that. Sit with your anxiety. Don't eat it away. Don't drink it away. Um, if you're the one who is maybe struggling with um, sobriety, um, I would say start a practice, and I, I would say this with the Ace of Pentacles that is grounded. Yes, of course, meditation is always a beautiful thing, but grounding yourself, go into a place, go into a park. If you don't have a backyard, go into a park that is not treated with pesticides. Take off your shoes, take off your socks, walk. Uh, if, it, if it doesn't have broken glass, you know, um, hug a tree. I mean, all those things that we think are kind of corny. Um, these things are really, there's a whole, there's a whole um, website about grounding. I think it's called grounding.com or something. But I mean, where they give you all these ideas. But even just going out in, in nature um, and really tuning in, meditating in nature is the best. Because you're getting the best of both worlds. When I go to the park, um, there's this one tree, and it just, I feel like I am so aligned with this tree, and I sit, you know, down, and I just instantly feel so much better about everything. So find that ritual for yourself that really feels nurturing, supportive, and um, comforting. And then I picked an additional card, the Six of Swords. And this is a card of um, sometimes relocation. But I, I will say, because I kind of went off on a tangent in this reading. Oh, sorry for the lack of focus there. But what, one thing that I want to say uh, in general, especially with this time, and this is your solar return. Uh, most of you will have your birthdays in May. But even now, and because the new moon is happening this week. Um, what you can do is start to decide how you're going to handle um, the, the things in your life that cause you anxiety. Now, isn't it interesting that both of these cards are swords? Swords relate to air signs. So if you are involved with an air sign, for sure, it might be suggesting that, you know, you will find peace by leaving that person and, you know, really declaring your own need for uh, peace and quiet and that sort of thing. But also just your own inner workings, like what you say to yourself about life. And with the Six of Swords, choose peace. And that means also what you consume online, 
big thing. You might not realize how much it's agitating you. But, you, you know, try to experiment. If you're somebody who's like me, who's <laughs> online a lot, and if you have a business that's online, it's sometimes hard to justify not being online, but you have to make that uh, commitment. Because the alternative can be um, an anxiety that just consumes you. And um, it, it, if you're involved in a relationship, you may have to leave it because you realize that you can't control this person and that they are really negatively impacting you. Um, with um, a job, same thing. People who try to blame others and make them feel obligated are very destructive people. And a lot of times people buy into that and they feel guilty. And that makes it that much worse. So you have to have this, the fortitude to know when you're being manipulated and refusing to play along. Okay, that's what I have for you, Taurus. Boy, this went on a long time. Well, here's a birthday gift to you. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like to explore these areas in more depth, I have natal chart interpretations, etc., etc., my website is rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.